welcome to my channel. This is new. It's going to be a reaction to not a music video, but a comedy skit. It's uh, called Pitch Meeting. And uh, it is um, Pitch Meeting for Disney movies. So let's check it out. Here so, you have an animated movie idea for me. <laughs> yes, sir, I do. Hamlet meets Bambi in Africa with cats. Oh, random word association is tight. Potato light bulb with a guinea pig judge. Those are some very random words, sir, but mine were actually deliberately chosen. Oh, really? Yeah, the movie's gonna be called The Lion King. Wow, well, okay, what happens in the movie? Well, the first image is gonna be this amazing African sunrise accompanied by some beautiful African music. Oh, that sounds so peaceful. How does the music go? Oh, it's gonna go a little something like yeah ah! yeah exactly you know it no I don't and that sounded really aggressive I couldn't even understand what you were saying I was saying Yansen Ganyama Bagiti Baba oh okay it did sound a lot cooler when you just yelled it yeah I thought so so what happens after the sunrise well all these African animals are gonna gather around to honor this new baby lion Simba who's gonna be king someday seems a little weird that they'd all gather to honor a predator that's probably gonna kill them no see it all has to do with the circle of life so they're cool with it what's the circle of life oh it's it's this really cool thing that Simba's dad Mufasa is gonna explain to him. Okay. See, the lions might violently murder and eat all the animals, but when the lions die, they turn to grass and the animals eat them. One of those groups is clearly getting a better deal out of that. It's all perfectly fair. So the lions are in charge because they can kill anyone they want? Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's called a reign of terror. Yeah, that sounds about right. So what other characters are in the movie? Well, there's Simba's uncle Scar who thinks he should be king when Mufasa dies. Why do they call him Scar? Because he's got a scar on his face. Oh, that's a little on the nose. No, it's a big one on his eye. Never mind. We're also gonna have Simba grow up with this lioness named Nala, and eventually they're gonna fall in love. But don't prides of lions only have like one or two males? Yeah, what does that have to do with anything? Well, that means that Nala's father is either Mufasa or Scar. Right, yeah. So Simba and Nala are either half siblings or cousins. Exactly. Oh, you're being weirdly okay with cat incest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remind me to never hang out with you, okay? I'll do that. So what else happens in the movie? Well, Simba's gonna have have this whole big song and dance number about how he can't wait to be king. Wow, that's super mean. What do you mean? I mean, you could secretly wish for your father to die, but singing a whole song about it is kind of messed up. I guess it is a little messed up now that you mention it. Simba's a jerk. Anyway, so later Scar and his hyenas are gonna trap Mufasa and Simba in a wildebeest stampede. Oh, so Mufasa tells them to calm down or something? What? No, they can't speak English, you silly producer. Oh, they can't? Yeah, only the animals I decide speak English speak English. Right, that makes sense. So then Scar is gonna kill Mufasa and go to Simba like, this is all your fault, you better run away and never come back. Very harsh. Yeah, so Simba's gonna start to leave and Scar's gonna tell his hyenas to go kill him. Wait, what? Well, Scar wants to make sure that he gets the throne. Right, but what was the point of that whole run away and never return thing if he was just gonna kill him? Why not just kill him right away? I don't know. Fair enough. So then Simba's gonna manage to escape and he's gonna get raised by a meerkat named Timon and a warthog named Pumbaa. Oh, and what does he do with them? He walks across a log till he's all grown up. Up. Wow. And yeah, since Simba is grown up now, you're gonna have to find another voice actor for these parts. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna try to get Matthew Broderick. He's great. Well, you kind of need an actor that also has an amazing singing voice, you know? No, I don't. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll just get somebody else to perform the singing parts. Like who? Well, I could for sure get Joseph Williams, the lead singer from Toto. Yeah, that dude is obsessed with Africa. That's a good point, so this is a perfect fit for him. So what happens next? Well, one day Nala is gonna show up and be like, holy crap, Simba, we all thought you were dead. Wow, it must be great to see his sister again. Yeah, and she's gonna be like, bro, you need to come back, because Scar took over with a bunch of hyenas, and now there's no food, or water, or rain. Wow, I can't believe Scar messed up the weather like that. Yeah, and then Simba and Nala are gonna roll around, and she's gonna give him this look like, oh boy, you and I are gonna get it on, brother. Feels like it's gonna be difficult to convey that expression on a cartoon animal, though. Actually, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, just get me in a room with your weirdest animator, and I'll tell him exactly how it should look. Oh, I can't wait for you to be out of my office, you weirdo. Anyway, so then Simba's gonna talk to a cloud and go home to confront Scar. How does that go? Well, Scar tells everybody that Simba killed Mufasa and he's a murderer. Oh, so Simba explains what really happened. No, he's gonna be like, I'm not a murderer, and that's about it. Wow. Yeah, and so then they're gonna fight, and Scar's gonna end up getting eaten by his hundreds of hyena buddies. Incredible. And so yeah, then Simba becomes king again, and it immediately starts to rain, and all the plants and stuff grow back. I never realized that a lion monarchy could have such an impact on the weather and environment. Yeah, it's a little known fact. Very cool. And what happens with the hyenas? Well, we never see them again, so... 
I guess the lions ate them. Oh my god. Yeah, real savage. So what do you think? Well, it sounds great. I can't wait to cash in on it a few times. What do you mean, a few times? So, you have a movie for me? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. It's gonna be called Aladdin. Oh, Aladdin what? Like, like in the city or something? Just Aladdin, that's the guy's name. Oh, I thought this was like a Scottish thing, never mind. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna meet this shopkeeper guy, and he's gonna be like, I'm gonna tell you the story about a magic lamp. Okay, and we'll come back to him at the end. No, we'll never see him again. Oh, just fully abandoning your framing device. Yeah, completely. Wow. And we're gonna have this cool song about Arabian Nights. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, it's gonna be like where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Oh, I think that might be racist. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Should I change it, or? Nah, let's keep it like that, and if people get mad, we'll change it for the home release. Well, now that you bring it up, I feel like people are probably gonna get mad. Nah, let's just keep it. Well, okay then. So what else happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna meet this Princess Jasmine, and the law says she has to marry a prince before her next birthday. Or what? Vague consequences. Oh, that sounds bad. Yeah, it might be. How old is Jasmine, anyway? She's like 15. Oh, this whole thing Thing's gonna be a little creepy then, isn't it? Yeah, if you stop to think about any of it, for sure. Well, let's hope people don't do that. Fingers crossed. So anyway, she's gonna venture into the market and meet this poor guy, Aladdin. That's the name of the movie. It sure is. So they're instantly gonna fall in love, but he's gonna get captured by some guards. Oh no. And then this bad guy, Jafar, tricks him into going into a cave. Oh, tricking people into going into caves is tight. Yeah, and the whole thing about this cave is that only one can enter, and he has to be a diamond in the rough. Oh, very mysterious. Is the cave full of treasures? It is, so Aladdin enters with his monkey Abu. I thought only one could enter. Yeah, well, Abu is an animal, so I guess it doesn't count. Wow, too bad Jafar doesn't have an animal companion. Oh, he does actually. He has a super smart parrot named Iago. Oh, so why didn't he send Iago in? Because that works. Yeah, so anyway, inside this cave, they're not allowed to touch anything except this magic lamp. Oh, sounds serious. Yeah, it is. So they immediately touch a flying carpet. Oh my god, so what happens? Nothing. They become friends with it. So that no touching thing was nonsense? Well, well, no, because then Abu touches a ruby and the whole place starts to fall apart and into lava and stuff. Oh my god. Yeah, and they almost escape, but then Jafar betrays them and leaves them for dead. That's not very nice. Nope. But luckily, Abu managed to grab the magic lamp and a big old genie comes out of it. Oh, a big old genie. And the genie can't make people fall in love, so Aladdin is like, okay, I wish for you to make me into a prince. Oh, right, because he's in love with the underage girl. Yeah, so that'll lead us into this whole story where Aladdin is trying to get with the underage girl, but it's not working. Very weird weird. I feel uncomfortable. And the genie's gonna be like, well, you know, you should tell her the truth. You're not a prince. Wait, so he didn't make him into a prince? Apparently not, I guess, or him being a prince would be the truth. Wow, Aladdin kind of got a crappy deal here. Yeah, but he definitely made it look like he was a prince. Like he had a big parade with a bunch of loyal subjects cheering for him. Like he made it look legit. Wait, what loyal subjects? Unclear, but there were lots of them. Did he create life just to pretend that Aladdin is a prince? Maybe. Wow, this genie's like a god that went insane. Yeah, so anyway, now Jafar Jafar wants to marry Jasmine so he can become Sultan. How does he plan on doing that? Well, Jafar is able to manipulate the current Sultan to get whatever he wants. Oh, like he has a way with words? No, he has a staff that lets him magically manipulate him. What? Yeah, he has like a magic cobra staff, lets him hypnotize people, get them to do what he wants. So why doesn't he just make the Sultan relinquish his power? I don't know. Why doesn't he make Aladdin go away? I don't know. Why doesn't he make Jasmine marry him? Okay, please get off my back about this mind control stuff. It's just weird to give the guy who wants stuff the power to make people give him stuff. Yeah, well, I'm a weird guy. What can I say? I don't know if that makes up for it. It does, actually. So anyway, then Aladdin is gonna take Jasmine on a magic carpet ride. Oh, he is? Yeah, and he's gonna say super romantic stuff while they're up there, like, don't you dare close your eyes. Oh, so he threatens her? Yeah, but in a romantic setting. I feel like that makes it worse. Well, she's into it, so it kind of works. Well, okay then. And then eventually Jafar gets his hands on the lamp. Uh-oh. Yeah, and he exiles Aladdin to this snowy, freezy place, so he'll freeze and die. Well, well, it's gonna be be hard for Aladdin to get out of there. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, cause see, Jafar sent him over there with his magic carpet. Oh, that's very considerate of him. It is, so Aladdin, you know, just kinda flies back. Fantastic. Yeah, and he manages to defeat Jafar by tricking him into wishing he was a genie. Oh, very smart. Yeah, but now Aladdin's not a prince anymore, so he can't marry Jasmine. Was he a prince, though? Not super clear, but he's definitely not anymore cause his clothes changed. Well, okay then. But Aladdin promised genie he would 
use his final wish to set him free, so now he's gotta be like, ah, I gotta choose between love and keeping my promise. Why doesn't he just do both? What do you mean? Well, he could wish to be a prince, whatever that means, then give Jasmine the lamp and she could wish for Genie's freedom. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that would solve everything. Well, then let's just pretend like this is a dramatic moment then. Oh, okay, I love pretending. Great, and so that's about it. Well, sounds great. Oh, and we're gonna have to get somebody really good to play the Genie. Oh, we are? Yeah, he has to be super charismatic and funny. Maybe we can get Robin Williams? Oh, he'd be perfect. He'd eat that roll up. Oh, yeah, he'd just be irreplaceable, so goodbye to future remakes and stuff. <laughs> oh, God. You know what's so funny? It is The things he points out, it's true. Some of the stuff I didn't even think about, like about uh, uh, the princess being underage. I just assumed she was of age, but apparently not. I don't know. I hope you guys got a good chuckle out of this. Uh, this is, um, the video is from, um, it's called Pitch Meeting. I forget the, the actor, the guy that does the skit. But obviously, you can tell he plays both roles. Uh, the premise basically is he has a a director or a writer who's pitching an idea of a movie to a head of a movie company. Then you know, so that's the, the basis of it. It's this guy is a genius. There will be plenty more of his videos I'm gonna do, and hopefully they will be allowed to be posted. I'm not blocked. Anyways, I hope you guys had a good chuckle out of this. I hope you have a wonderful day or night. Take care of yourselves and the ones you love. Bye-bye.